Um, his paper is called Where Materiality Reads, Meets Discourse, a Three-Element Model for Brand Building. I'm so sorry. Okay, please welcome Matt Chen. Um, yeah, hello. Uh, I'll try to give you another interpretation of uh, Peirce, actually, and uh, it's... It, hopefully it's application in brand building, because that's what I uh, actually do, mainly uh, as a semiotician, but also I work as a brand builder or brand creator, so I build brand brands from scratch. So just to give you an introduction, I, I will, uh, in this 15-minute uh, slot, I'll give you some background on, on uh, how I actually came to think the way I think, and after that give you some more instructions on the theoretical ba background of my thinking and, and uh, actually my interpretation of, uh, of Peirce. And then uh, the, uh, I'll get you through this whole process of brand building uh, step by step with a case study I've been working on uh, 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 lately. And at the end, I'll just summarize it and show you the result of the, uh, of the case study. So first of all, uh, the background. Uh, uh, I think it's very important to say because uh, because it influenced the way I think. So the, uh, first of all, I, I worked uh, as a semiotic researcher and uh, I was focused on actually on uh, understanding and recognizing signs and, uh, 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 but then after changing to brand building and innovation, I needed to actually focus on uh, understanding how the, uh, how signs are created and how they actually become uh, signs. The other change that I went through is uh, uh, from working uh, from the homogenic environment of single language of semioticians who actually understood each other very well to a multidisciplinary uh, environment of people of different uh, expertise, uh, design, product designers, graphic designers, qualitative and quantitative uh, um, researchers, strategists, uh, brand managers and so on. So this variety of languages uh, actually uh, was very, uh, very important, and the voices or the uh, the, the languages of each of the, those persons was were uh, equally important in the whole process of uh, brand building. And so, uh, the the other the, the the third and the last change here was my actually change from thinking through from uh, the Caesarian model of sign to focus more on language and this, uh, the, the idea of ar arbitrariness to the person model of sign, which has a really important uh, element for me now as a, as a person who creates brands, uh, uh, the, the, the re relation to the object, to the real. And uh, I think it's really important now, especially when the brands are actually, you know, the part of this post-truth world uh, where, where they are not rooted, rooted in the real, I would say. So uh, just to start off with a person model, uh, so, so b b person, I'll treat, I actually treat the person perspective or person sign as a brand model. But the kind of uh, thing that is actually problematic for me is that uh, it's actually, you know, the, the finale of the process of brand building. It's something that is very useful for the brand managers to actually understand their brand and to evaluate it and audit it. But actually, as a, as a person working on brand building, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't explain the whole process of getting there. So I needed to take a step back and understand how to actually get there. So I focused on, uh, I tried to imagine the, 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 the design of purse in this context of actual, uh, of reality, I would say. So I needed to understand something I called sign uh, becomings. So uh, the way the, uh, the sign actually emerges from a variety of uh, significant elements of different kind. And then I made, again, a step backward because it was even not even uh, uh, sufficient to, or enough to, to understand how to, how, to, how to understand the process. And I envisioned the reality as a cha chaotic multiplicity. So the reality, in a wide sense of the, of the word, uh, which mixes diff uh, some entities different in kind, uh, that is actually the re reality, this is pure possibility, something uh, 
uh, something chaotic, something, uh, uh, something shapeless, I would say, and figure out how to actually uh, understand how to get to, to understand the, how to make the connections between those elements uh, to unite them in a one coherent uh, sign, sign. So to cope with that, I actually uh, uh, carved out of those, again, based on, uh, trying, uh, inspired by a person model, I uh, carved out those three types of multiplicities, different in kind. The first multiplicity is a material multi multiplicity. Second, uh, second type of multiplicity is a discursive multiplicity. And the third is expressive one. Each of those, uh, each of those uh, domains or multiplicities are different in kind and are actually based on a different language. So the first material uh, entity or the first material domain is based on uh, language of uh, natu natural sciences, of engineering, of product design. So it's really based on, uh, on the object and the materiality in itself. It copes with a, a multiplicity of, of functions, of potentialities, of capabilities, but, but also uh, a ways of uh, uh, conveying the, 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 mm, the experience of the product or the object, actually, not the product now. So the, the, the discursive uh, domain is a multiplicity of texts, of cultural texts. This is a, a more of a domain of uh, writers, journalists, uh, bloggers, people who cope with, uh, uh, with, uh, with language, but also visual language as well. But, uh, uh, so it's a yeah, multiplicity of, of text, that's actually it. Uh, I think that, that's, that's enough. And the expressive domain is a multiplicity of forms. So it's a domain of art, design, uh, language of people actually coping with uh, different kinds of forms. But uh, it could be visual, it could be musical, it could be performative, any types of uh, expressive uh, forms of actually, uh, you know, uh, expression simply. Uh, so then I came across another problem. When I have those three multiplicities, how I actually made, make any signs, uh, any sign or sim simply maybe one sign uh, out of those three domains. Uh, then I thought of an illustration I like very much from, from the Saussure, uh, uh, the, 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 the illustration that shows how the language unit, units in his mind are created. The, fir the first, uh, the, the upper side of the picture is, uh, uh, in the Caesarean words, a thought, but it's actually thought that is pre-language pre thought, that is shapeless and indistinctive mass, so a kind of a chaos as well. On the other, on the on the um, downside of, of, of or, or on the uh, this bottom side, yeah, bottom side of a, of a slide, you see the another chaotic uh, domain, which is a domain of phonic phonic substance, which is neither, more, uh, as the Caesar says, neither more fixed nor more rigid than thought. So I thought that actually uh, this is very applicable to the uh, model of three multiplicit multiplicities trying to build those interconnections between those multiplicities uh, will, uh, uh, will give me an opportunity to understand the sign becomings. And uh, maybe this will be uh, a bit clearer when I'll get to the process again now. So these three multiplicities are actually steps in the process they are, that I apply in my everyday work. So first step is a material research second step is a cultural research, and the third step is something I call uh, expressive anchoring. So the first step, material research, sorry, but we're back again to the, to the, to the chaos. Um, uh, this is, again, an object, or more, uh, to be more particular, a thing. A thing in its, full poten in its potentiality, something that is imperceivable uh, to the human mind, because uh, uh, thing, thing as something that is very vague and chaotic. Uh, uh, maybe I won't get too much to, into detail to this because I don't want to, don't, don't want to you know, confuse you. But, uh, but the, 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 the way from 
thing to object is, is very interesting because when you understand a thing which is full of potentialities and you extract some of them, you create an object. To create an object, you, get, you have to put some uh, potentialities of the object and put them to the fore to understand what the thing is, actually is. You can extract those potentialities uh, from each, each object. And how to do that? You actually, uh, I'll, I'll explain it to you in, a, in, in the case I, I was working in, uh, I, I was working on. Uh, the kind comes to me with a jar full of mixed vegetables, spices, and, uh, and different, different uh, products and so on in, in, in the jar. And he asked me, okay, make a, make a brand for me. And to do that, you have to understand actually what you're holding in this jar. What is it that you're coping with? And uh, to do that, to understand the potentialities that are in this jar, uh, I, need, I need to do, or I usually do, interviews with producers, product service creators, and PD experts, experts, in this, in this case, cooks, restaurant owners, food experts, and leading consumers, but also do uh, auto immersion, trying the product by yourself, to, but trying to get rid of you know, preconce uh, preconceived, any, any, any preconceived ideas, and try to understand what I'm actually coping with. But, and the goal is to, to gather as many features of the product uh, or service as possible, creating a long list of aspects that are valued by the experts and leading consumers, or lists of reoccurring experiences of product usage. This is a short uh, example of, of the list uh, of this actual vegetable paste that, that, we've, uh, that I was working on. Uh, so you see some of, uh, this is very detailed. Uh, for example, we have, you, you, you have like vegetables, but you also have mushed vegetables, vegetables in chunks, mixed vegetables, and so on. Uh, the important thing for the final result is variety of six variants and uh, original spices like curry, nigella, nigella seeds, and so on. So, so keep to that because it's, it's got some implications at the end. end. And then you have cultural research. To do the cultural research, normally, as a, semi as a semiotic researcher, I, was, uh, I, I needed to do a research that was very focused on a certain concept, like masculinity, for example, or femininity. Now, I need to do, uh, or what I do, I do the cultural research, which is or materia materially, materiality oriented. So I have this long list product uh, uh, features in front of myself, and I'm reading magazines, blogs, watch films, books, and so on, about food, cooking, in this case, uh, in the case of this vegetable paste, and try to understand or find uh, discourses which relate to the material aspect of, uh, 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 of the product. Uh, to give you a, a little more, uh, to give you a, a, an example, I, I, I'll use the, 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 the example of, of, from uh, von, uh, von Exkul uh, and the approach of uh, different entities, entities uh, living within different umwelt and towards one simple thing, an oak tree. A forester with his rational mind and rational thinking uh, meeting a tree, he measures it, tries to use he, his uh, bota botanical or, or rooted in the na natural sciences, uh, language rooted in the si uh, natural sciences to understand, to measure it, to evaluate it, if it's ready for cutting or not. When uh, a little girl approaches an oak tree with her uh, notion of, of her understanding of trees uh, uh, in, or influenced by fables, uh, magic stories, uh, and stuff like that, she sees in a crack of a tree a face, a demonic face uh, 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 of a monster. And, uh, uh, and this is actually two people, uh, 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 yes, 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 uh, two, two types of uh, people understanding the same object through different uh, materialities in a different way because of the actually preconceived dis discourses. So this cultural research uh, needs to uh, uh, be focused on materiality of, the, of those material, uh, uh, material aspects of the brand. And uh, it's, it's usually just going through cultural texts, interviews with journalists and writers and bloggers eventually, 
and to have uh, like a perspective to, uh, to find the prospective discourses re relevant to the material aspect of the product and emerging or contemporary interpretations of material aspects of the product plus some visual cues for, for the latest, uh, later stage. In practice, it looks something like this. I, 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 I have a wall where I put all those material aspects and then uh, surround them with different discourses I cut out from printed out materials or, uh, uh, or magazines and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, just to give you the, 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 the thing that is relevant for the, for the for the last stage is this expressive kitchen cre creativity. This was uh, uh, like a discourse that was then very popular, uh, which is you know, strengthened by a master chef, uh, lots of books which says that you should experiment in home and be creative in your kitchen and so on and so on. And the expressive anchoring is then uh, the, the, the last stage which uh, uh, actually uh, creates a variety of signs from those multiplicities. And how do you do it? You just, you do uh, usually some sketch storming and mood boards, uh, work with designers, ar ar artists, or sensorial experts to create uh, certain expressions that would mediate between material, material aspect of a thing and the discursive aspect. Uh, it's a discursive aspect, so it will help to interpret them in a uh, meaningful way. Uh, yeah, this is creating the re representations and uh, so on. Uh, just to give you again an example from this project, we g did some uh, sketching and then some mood boards that would help the interpret uh, the vegetables uh, in this case in a certain uh, in a certain way. So the result was uh, this is uh, this is the brand that actually is it's uh, not it's uh, it was introduced to the mo Polish market recently, and uh, I'll just give you uh, how how actually this tells something about materiality of the product. The discourse that was used is uh, way I, I don't know if you can see it uh, that good, but the the language of an expressive painting. Uh, and uh, authorship we try to introduce through this visual to the brand. So this is the, the, the name of a, of a brand is Wawrzyniec. In English, it probably sounds stupid because it's it translated to Lawrence. It's a name, uh, but, but, but in Polish, it sounds a lot like vegetables. So warzywa is ve are vegetables in Poland, and wawrzyniec, probably you don't see <laughs> the difference at all, but, but if you're Polish, you, you understand it. Uh, so uh, this is a name, and also written in a, in a kind of a signature. Uh, we, tried, we, we, we looked at uh, signatures of uh, painters, different painters, to make it as uh, painter, uh, uh, like as possible, and as I said, this this language of uh, expressive painting uh, that uh, that should like tell the story that we wanted to. So, just to give you the summary, uh, the the material aspect of the brand was a variety of vegetable variants in and interesting and the interesting flavors or interesting spices that were included in the in the product. The expressive and uh, the, the, the discursive aspect of the product was expressive and creative cooking, so the notion that was popular at the time. And uh, the expressive anchorage was this, uh, uh, the, 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 this expressive form of painting and the authorship, uh, 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 which, which, which was conveyed by the signature of Lawrence. So uh, just to give you the, the, the process step by step, material research, then you, have, then you have to identify material potentialities, cultural research, which is culturally oriented, uh, you find co corresponding discurse, uh, discourses and brand ideas, uh, then anchoring expressions, creating brand concepts, and finally, uh, brand development and creating a final sign. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, this was great, especially in terms of you not only have this 
three, three element approach to a brand and you also have a case study in one. So that was great to see. Thank you very much. Um, any questions from the floor? We have uh, one over there. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting. And it was really great to see some of my favorite uh, illustrations from various semiotic texts in there as well, especially the Ux school. It's really nice. Um, but I just wondered, is this a, a kind of a regular process for you to go through this? Because the idea of, of basing the whole kind of brand identity in the material essence of the product is for me, I think, very powerful and often forgotten by a number of brands. They'll sort of start with the values, uh, even if those values don't necessarily correlate or relate very strongly to their own product. So um, is, this, yeah, is this something you get to do often or is this a bit of an exception? Uh, actually, I apply it uh, almost every time I create brands, uh, but also uh, when I'm working on, uh, on repositioning of the brand. Uh, and I always start with a, uh, with a materiality of the product or service as well, because it's, you know, you have to, uh, I always try to understand all the tangible aspects of the thing I'm working on. Uh, because otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise, as I said, I, I think it's it's needed now, especially when the, when the, when the, when the when the brands uh, just uh, became uh, really not reliable and not trustworthy, and uh, and building brands has uh, has become something like uh, you know creating some. Uh, mumbo jumbo i would say how something that, that is that is not not real not true and so on so this is for me very uh, very important and actually i use it every time almost or almost every time i work on the project any other questions i think we have malcolm in the back thank you for that it's absolutely fascinating and uh, i i think um the materiality part of the model is, uh, is, is great for extending the repertoire of what, what we do in the applied commercial version of semiotics and maybe giving some structure to things that we're doing piecemeal around the senses so far. I think ultimately maybe, I mean this is not, not a challenge, I mean this, I think it's a huge advance, but a build might be that in materiality, the start point isn't actually chaos. It's probably the laws of physics and, uh, and, and the life sciences, ultimately. You know, so it would be the theory of evolution and relativity and quantum gravity. You know, and I think what we're talking about, if we take it back to the furthest point, is um, involving you know, the, the, the split in our education systems between the exact sciences, which have been historically mechanistic and the human and social sciences which have historically involved free will and these things. That's to do with the Cartesian split which is now over and knowledge, to further knowledge, the people on the two sides of that divide have to be talking to each other and working together. That's one of the key points that people like Jesper Hofmeier and Soren Breer, that, you know, the biosemioticians, the Sebeoc tradition, what Marcel was reaching for this morning, that, that's what it's about, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, as you said at the beginning, this excitement that you have moving to the multidisciplinary environment, this is one I share myself. I think that the specialist semiological agency where people learn to be semioticians, you know, <laughs> after a, a few days of training, that's probably over. Uh, but I think there is a really positive role for semiotics in, um, facilitating those conversations in bringing many different disciplinary perspectives to the table. And uh, there will be a period where clients who just want actionable stuff and um, providers who are only passionate about pleasing the, the client, where that kind of in-the-box semiotics isn't going to be leading it. You know, there will be some challenge, there will be some edge, and the kind of clients we want to move things forward are going to be the um, Justin Trudeau kind of leader, not the narcissistic businessman, serve me Trump kind of leader, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. very exciting possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Can I come on, comment on this for a second, just for a second? <laughs>
So first of all, uh, thank you for this comment. Uh, uh, it's really valuable because I, I also think of a now I, I think of a semiotician uh, working in, a, in the process, more of a sign facilitator than sign, uh, you know, researcher. Uh, and that's I think uh, that's a that's a role of a semiotician now. On the other hand, the chaos. This is very important, very interesting for me. <laughs> that physics is not the uh, the starting point because, uh, as Peirce said, th uh, that, that, that this this is uh, actually an object is something that is in this chaotic form of potentialities is everything and nothing. It is imperceivable for the human to understand this chaotic form. So actually, physics is a step to understand it, but it doesn't, you know, give you the whole picture, uh, just gives you a part of the picture of the, of the reality or a certain interpretation of it.